The topic uh, of my lectures is Jan uh, Dragnaut. And uh, uh, I discussed this from the point, uh, from the gravity viewpoint. But some of you uh, are familiar with this because uh, uh, robot students are working on this uh, for some years. Um, but uh, many of you probably have no idea what uh, they are. So uh, instead of going directly to this uh, giant graphon, uh, I plan to give um, a rather long uh, introduction to uh, string theory and some related uh, uh, topics uh, to giant graphon. So, but first, so I just tell you uh, what uh, they are. So I denote giant gravitons by GG, and, and so giant gravitons they are a multi graviton space. So this is a, so what we call giant graviton is a bunch of, so it's a collection of uh, gravitons uh, which is traveling around some circle and so this is actually inherent to ABSCFP so this appears. Uh, in holography, uh, whose uh, primary example is ADS-CFT. I hope you have heard of ADS-CFT. And this ADS-CFT so provides a one of few um, very established A framework, a formulation of quantum gravity. So this uh, peculiar gravitons, they appear when people started trying to understand uh, quantum gravity. So this could be something really uh, important or fundamental when you try to um, understand quantum gravity. So that's why it's fascinating and that's why probably Robert works on it. And of course, uh, a bit, a bit, I think if I ask students, yes, so what is giant graph for you? Yes, yes, but for you, probably that's not the answer. Sure, for no yes. For you, it's a sure for no yes. Okay. And uh, but so this is the CFP view. Okay, so the, most of the students here uh, they work on the graphs, but uh, from the CFT. The CFT is what is it? The field of theory. Yes. So this is a gravity <coughs> and field of theory correspondence. So this is the field of theory viewpoint. 
and the Shiva polynomial is uh, there are some upper letters uh, in component in the field. So that's why I, I emphasize gravity view of this, this thing. Uh, so there's. Uh... Okay. Um, so my plan is uh, first uh, extensive introduction. I start with the difficulty of quantum gravity and why we cannot quantize it so easily. And then next I try to convince you that how strings can possibly uh, overcome the difficulty of quantum gravity. So this is kind of basic um, string theory, field theory stuff. And then I should uh, tell what the gravitons are uh, from just uh, uh, GR. Um, yeah, I just show uh, how gravitons appear uh, in uh, general relativity. And I hope I, I can actually come to giant gravitons eventually. But, uh, so they are, from a string theory viewpoint, you know what they are? Hmm? These three brains, great. Yes, so this is uh, what they call uh, these three brains. So there are something called D brains in string theory, and so I thought I should uh, briefly review on D brains. So then um, I also review how this correspondence ADS CFT uh, appears. Okay, so I start with the introduction. So that's the introduction. And the second part will be the giant graviton part, which I hope actually I can make it. But let's see. So the first part. Difficulty of quantum gravity. Why it is so difficult uh, or non denormalizable? Because uh, if you don't know why this is difficult, you wouldn't appreciate the importance of various safety. So I take Einstein's gravity. And uh, in my lecture, I take this unit, H plus C and, uh, equal to 1. So this is an action, yes? for general relativity. And for the moment, I consider dimension 4. This has to be extended to 26 and 10 dimensions later. And, uh, OK. So now, uh, what is kappa? Newton's constant, yeah. Newton's constant. So this is Newton's constant. <coughs> and so it's related to plant scale. <coughs> uh, plant mass. Uh, Okay, which is roughly 10 to the 18th. Yes, okay, so this is the only scale that uh, Einstein gravity has. And you want to quantize this. But first, let me ask you um, uh, 
is dimension of Newton's constant. Dimension of Newton's constant, you know, length is length squared. This length squared. So over all, this has to be dimensionless, and uh, this contains two derivatives, and there's uh, this length of the force, and so this has to be length squared. And uh, so this is the problem. So this is the trouble. And uh, in quantum field theory, do you know what they call it? There's a classification of operators. And Newton constant is a coupling constant. If the coupling constant has this length dimension then irrelevant. Yes, so this is uh, so it's Einstein's gravity. Uh, as you will see, uh, there are many couplings and they are all irrelevant. Uh, so So this tells you that uh, there are only uh, irrelevant operators, which is a signal that you can't uh, normalize this theory. It, it, well, it's not. It, it could be that you can normalize it, but uh, in a special uh, situation. Okay. So now let's consider perturbation. So what I'm gonna do is I I expand the metric from the flat metric and so this is the background and this is the fluctuation. Yes, uh, so I treat uh, this as a quantum field of theory. And uh, my, so your field, in this case, is the metric. Yes. And uh, in the scalar field of theory, what you do is actually you expand uh, scalar phi to, into a background and fluctuation. But the background happens to be quite often zero, and so you only have fluctuations. But in this case, the obvious background you can take is the flat, the flat background. So then, um, so I do this expansion and plug this into the action and schematically this becomes and it continues uh, uh, do you see how they appear? Like so, there's always uh, two derivatives, and that's the basic structure. Um, so, lemma tensor uh, it has roughly Christoffel. Derivative of Christoffel's uh, yeah, so, yeah, derivative of Christoffel plus Christoffel squared. And 
this is like G inverse del G. So you see that uh, this uh, curvature contains two derivatives. Yeah, Christopher symbol contains one derivative and square two, and the derivative of Christopher contains two derivatives. Yes. So that's why uh, you have to have uh, two derivatives. And also, you have this inverse. Yeah? So inverse of this, if you expand, it will generate infinite number of terms. Yeah? So luckily, luckily speaking, you have this thing, and then uh, you generate uh, That's why there will be infinite number of times. Okay, so now let's consider um, four point vertex of this type. And I want to consider the renormalization of the coupling to this uh, vertex. So this is an interaction in the cortic and uh, has contained uh, two derivatives. So, so I, I'm, uh, I will um, write down some uh, Feynman diagrams. Uh, first, T level, uh, let's say you have delta H, H, delta H, H, and then you have coupling kappa. Yeah. So this is one tree diagram. And you have um, cubic coupling. So then there's another tree diagram that can give you this. That would be use a three point vertex and uh, construct a four point interaction. How do you do that? Yes, yes, exactly, yes. Uh, this. Um, so this external lines corresponds to, uh, has to correspond to uh, this H and their H. And then, um, so this internal line should be del H, yeah? It's a del, del H squared, so del H, del H, and H. And I just count the, num uh, the power of momentum. So let's, so let's P to be standard momentum. And, and then you have P, and you have P, and here you have propagator, which goes as uh, 1 over P squared. And but you have derivative, and so it should add P. Um, Actually, oh sorry, p squared. So uh, here you have propagator. Yes, so that would be their h, their h. So the power of momentum is zero. 
So you have derivative, two derivatives, and uh, HH gives you 1 over P squared, the propaganda. Uh, so here, uh, what you got is a uh, uh, kappa. So it's kappa uh, P squared. This is OK. This is finite. Any question? I'm just counting the power of momentum. So you have no issue. Uh, so this, uh, so to be precise, you have this, and so it should give a kappa p squared. So kappa and p squared. So that's what you get from three level. That's okay. Uh, but uh, you you face the problem uh, as you go to loops. Power 
Pablo Marquez Cueto. Pablo Marquez Cueto, yes. Pablo Marquez Cueto. Yes, because uh, you know Pablo Marquez Cueto, the rest is, the rest doesn't have any power. So then, uh, you have to introduce UV cutoff. Otherwise, this will be diverging. And uh, so, so the lambda dependence, what's the power of lambda? Yeah. Taught by 
admission of uh, you have to study uh, some of you, yes and uh, some of you may not so how could uh, things uh, possibly come to rescue so that's the question so this is about UV finiteness <coughs> of uh, string theory so the problem here was so in this loop there's a bunch of gravitons going around yes and this divergence comes from very energetic gravitons going around. So that's the problem. And maybe you you must have heard that the string theory can actually evade this issue. So the easiest way to see it is maybe you have seen this before. But uh, consider uh, because the problem is happens at the loops, yes? So I want to consider a loop in string theory. So consider a loop. So it's, uh, this is a torus. So this is string theory one loop. And uh, here, I had uh, four external lines. But to simplify the problem, uh, I don't put any external lines. I stick with the simplest. This is the one loop vacuum bubble. Uh, that's what I uh, look into. If it's too easy, uh, tell me, I, I can skip this. No? Because uh, what you have is uh, 
truth, which is propaganda. And then you do the Gaussian integral, then what that will give you uh, 1 over square root of this determinant. You exponentiate it, and then you get this. And the plus 4 boson and minus 4 fermions Right, so how do you calculate this? Uh, okay, uh, so I, I introduce some Notation for simply to simplify it. So D. So log determinant D. Yeah. So log determinant of some operator, this identity is trace log. And then here I diagonalize D. Uh, so if I diagonalize D and if its eigenvalues are given by lambda, then you sum log lambdas and you sum, uh, sum it over. Yeah, so then you can convince that this formula is correct because if you diagonalize, there will be diagonal lambda, and then take log gives you this. And then you start doing some tricks. Uh, yeah. You can rewrite. This are uh, by integral.
when you calculate the loop diagonals, you actually often use this. Uh, this is called swing parameter. Okay. Um, and the, the point here is so you wanted to calculate this and then you somehow reload this to this form and you are interested in uh, lambda dependence so we can ignore this because it doesn't depend on lambda so ignore this because only lambda dependence is here, and this gives you some actually infinite constant, but we drop it. This is the Lucian plus m squared, so inverse uh, propagator. So in momentum space, so this is the uh, so this is the eigenvalue, yes, but this is not. Uh, so right, so going to uh, momentum space is the way to get the eigenvalue. So now you got this.
this integral, uh, you are in trouble. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, this is actually a gamma function, but you, you, that's uh, with analytic continuation. So, for if this is positive, that's gamma function, then you can continue this value to negative. Yes, once you do that, you have less problem. But uh, as this, uh, as it is, uh, this integral has a problem. Yes. What's the problem? Yes, good, good. So this, from this part, uh, you have infinity. Yes. This part is okay because there's exponential down here. Um, so this is, uh, this, so this divergence is what? Which is violet. Yes, it has to be UV. Oh. UV. Uh, so it comes from this, no? So if S is large, uh, then the co uh, contribution comes from small p. Because otherwise, this exponential dumps. But uh, for small s, all p can contribute. Yeah, because there's no dumping. So that means actually this uh, small s corresponds to the large p. So roughly speaking, s is like one over p squared. That's what this exponential tells you. So so it uh, it gives the uv divergence. <laughs> End of the day. So it's time? Oh. Um, so now, in a particle theory, uh, you have a problem, yes? So then now you want to compare this to string theory. Uh, what changes uh, string theory can give you? That's the question. Uh, so in the string theory case, so now I come to strings, string, and so that means I calculate this vacuum bound. So this, so what will change is this uh, inverse propagator. Uh, it's given by in string theory. Uh, anybody took string theory? I think a PhD student actually took string theory course. Yes, definitely. <laughs> you took it now. And so. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the inverse propagator for string theory. Um, okay, so I don't know. Uh, this is the zero mode of Villa zero generator. Yes. Transverse direction, so it's uh, 2 to the 0, 1, 2 to 26 uh, in the, for the bosonic string. And the L tilde 
you have, this is a, let's say this is left mover, and then there's a right mover, yes? Because uh, this is cross chain, you have two directions, going this way, or you have going this way. So that corresponds to this L0 and L0 tilde. Yeah? And this is often written as N because it counts the number of excitation. And so L is the excitation of string. So this also corresponds to the mass, yes? So this is actually mass. You can roughly identify this as mass. Uh, so string theory, uh, you have this uh, okay. So now you have P squared. Uh, this became P squared N plus N filter minus 2. So this n plus n tilde minus 2 is the mass. So the string, uh, you can think of this as a collection of infinite number of particles, right? Labeled by this mass. And OK. Uh, I want to finish this part at least. From what you had uh, for the particle theory, you replace this p square plus m square by this uh, Mirazal generator, L naught. So that's the naive thing to do. But this couldn't help, uh, so this will give you the UV divergence. So there's one thing uh, missed. String theory, okay, let me first write this. Uh, e to the i phi. So this corresponds to the constraint uh, So if, when you do this integral this is delta function So this gives you L0 equal to L0 tilde uh, Some state Clearly, has uh, these constraints. So this is on shell. 
And this comes from the departmentalization in a space-like directional string. So string theory, you have a one sheet labeled by tau and sigma. And then the labeling should not change physics. And uh, so this in particular comes from a sigma translation invariance uh, after taking conformal gauge. If you know what it is, there's something conformal gauge. But uh, so this is a constraint imposed by deparameterization invariance. That's why you have to uh, add this part. So this is very important. And then uh, I go post there, and then introduce two pi tau one and pi two pi tau two and tau complex parameter tau. This is the parameter parameterizing the torus. Um, so then this So 
if you take this region alone, so you are eliminating this infinite, infinite multiple counting of the integral. So, so this was not true. Uh, so you have to replace this to uh, what it's called fundamental region. So, to be precise and to be careful, uh, you have to actually um, restrict the uh, region of integrals uh, to this fundamental region. Now you see, so sorry, so this is two. Yeah. So now this S. So S equal zero was the problem. Yes. That gave you U B divergence. So we have look at this, and then now. In theory, get rid of this uh, small s region that is called tau two. So here, so string, so strings cut off uh, short distance. That's the interpretation. So that way, you avoid uh, ultraviolet divergence. That's why, in principle, you and the string theory contains gravity. And that's why this could be a quantum gravity. Yeah? And uh, of course, the string has size. And so if you try to probe the short distance scale, you can't really probe uh, the distance shorter than the string itself, because it gets fuzzy. You know? So that's this effect. Yes, and I should stop.